we do have the, these two major siege operations in Wicksburg and then also in Petersburg. And your descriptions of Petersburg were kind of like, it almost reminded me of what you experience, what soldiers eventually experienced in World War I. And especially like some of the British trenches, when we think of pictures of just how the water is standing in them, the soldiers trying to slug through that mud. Um, how much is that also affecting? I mean, we know that it's psychologically impactful on an army that usually moved around, fought a battle. And I mean, let's face it, they maybe had 10, 12 days of combat a year, but now they're day in, day out for a year in combat situation, these terrible conditions in the trenches. Um, how does that affect the soldiers, um, kind of this constant exposure to everything? It, it's incredibly dehabilitating. Um, Vicksburg. They're out there in, in the sun. Mm. in the heat of a Mississippi summer. At least Grant, because he's Grant, is able to create a logistical system that gets enough water from the Mississippi River to his soldiers. And there's, Warren Graybell writes about this. There's a huge operation involving getting enough barrels of water out to the men per day to keep them involved. The Confederates, because they're often cut off from the river, are, are suffering tremendously from dehydration and the sun and an increasing lack of food. So, I mean, for them, I mean, it's, it's a rather hellish experience. I mean, as you know, it, it, right before Pemberton surrenders, he, he talks to his generals about, you know, maybe we should attack and try to break out or at least die like men. And his generals tell him the men are too weak to fight and they've already eaten the horses. Yeah. So we really can't. Um, I mean, you find that in Petersburg, too. You find that in all sorts of other places, really. Uh, the, the rainy spell uh, in the Atlanta campaign always comes to mind, too, where they're in the trenches for days um, while it's raining hard. You just expand that exponentially at Petersburg because you got rain, then you got heat, then you got snow, and they're just out there day after day, unless they're getting some kind of relief in the rear, which they did sometimes. And... I mean, I think that would affect them in all sorts of ways. There's the, the obvious issue of the immediate effect on their health. Um, rainy weather, bad weather in general means that the supply wagons aren't getting through, which means you're hungrier mm. in bad weather. Uh, uniforms start falling apart. Shoes start falling apart. You and I emailed about this a little bit. Um, shoes are constantly falling apart because they get wet. And I mean, they're not constructed to survive rainy conditions. The Union Army did not get its boots from L.L. Bean. But at least the Union Army has enough leather to right. eventually replace these shoes, whereas the Confederacy, for various uh -huh. reasons, is, is running out of leather and the methods to produce it. So I mean, they don't even have that. Uh, life in those trenches was, well, it would be hellish for anybody. It would be hellish for us right now. But it was. I think incredibly difficult. And, and the, the winter at, at Petersburg is not especially harsh. There are some bad days. Mm -hmm. It wasn't especially a bad winter as compared to the previous ones. But, I mean, they're, they're outside and they're not moving around very often for months. I mean, Grant's always trying to expand those lines and he attacks these supply lines from time to time including in some horrible weather in December of 1864. But they're just exhausted. They're out in the sun. As, as Katie Shively pointed out years ago, just the fact of walking around in mud means that you're carrying several extra pounds on your, on your feet as you try to walk. 